I love myself enough to know what I want. I love myself enough to know what I deserve. I love myself enough to know what feels right for me. I also love myself enough to stand up for what I believe in and I also love myself enough to stand up to people that make me feel like shit and for people that don't treat me as an equal human being. I love myself to do the things that I love and I love myself enough to also limit myself on things that I don't need. I love myself to surround myself by people that love me and people that treat me right. The list could literally go on forever because, as the title says, I fucking love myself. What I'm talking about today is not uh, at all a egotistical, obnoxious or cocky subject at all. It's all really centered on how I actually got to this point. I think Cardia a year ago would never imagine herself saying what I just said. I never had this amount of love for myself last year and I didn't think it was at all necessary and I never even thought of it as a priority. The idea of loving yourself and the reason why this topic may seem a bit random but the fact that it's not spoken about enough definitely freaks me out a bit. I'm talking about this today because I'm not seeing enough of it at all. I'm not seeing barely any of it to be honest. Obviously my job involves putting myself out there on screen, um, talking to people in person, posting photos, taking photos, filming things and it's, it, it's all this whole world of like I am showing myself to other people and I went into this being a complete insecure mess. I didn't back myself really at all and so when comments were fired at me it would always get me down. I'm at a point now where I've taken the time to actually get to know me, get to love me, um, to be at a point where things don't affect me anymore. Harsh words that are said to me literally brush off my shoulder and I don't just say that, it's actually true. It's like there's no longer a little vacuum in me that wants to hear negative stuff. It's simply when the negative stuff comes in, it just, it just like completely brushes out. I want to talk about how you yourself can get to that point because the messages I get bombarded with 24-7 nearly every day I open my Tumblr inbox or my comments on my Instagram. How did you get to be so confident? How did you get to the confidence you have today? How can I stop hating myself? How can I embrace the body I'm in? How can I embrace the person I am? How can I find my own individual style? How can I just be me? And isn't that crazy that people are coming to me to ask, how can I just be me? Because I mean, no one can actually tell you how to just be you. You are the only person that really knows you. But have you ever connected with that? Have you ever touched base with you? Like, have you ever asked yourself, how am I doing? How am I feeling? What do I need? What do I want? And a lot of the time we don't because we're taught, ever since we're young, that having any care for your inner self or ever really backing yourself completely or ever really just loving yourself fully is an egotistical or cocky thing. Me coming up to up front being like, I fucking love myself. Most people would be like, oh, look at this cocky bitch. But it doesn't have to be that way. I'm not saying I love myself in a way like I'm better than someone. I'm saying I love myself because I'm validating me. I'm happy in my skin. I'm happy in my body. I'm happy with the person I am today. I'm happy of my growth. I'm proud of my growth. I, I think people get stuck in their mind because they think the person they are right this very moment is the person they're going to be in years time. People change. It is a big myth when people are like, oh my, this person's never going to change. And it's like, there's always hope. Your mind is the strongest and most powerful thing ever. And inside of you, you could be the most horrible and negative person. And there is still always hope that you end up being the most positive person ever. Everyone has a chance to blossom and form into someone who they really are. I'm going to read out kind of what I started writing when I sat down to give myself a guideline for this video. And I normally try and give myself a guideline for what to say, but um, I kind of end up rambling. So... I'll just go off what I actually started writing. We're brought up to tell ourselves to constantly improve and change. Change who we are, change what we love, change what we believe in. Other people's views are smashed onto us ever since we're young. It is seen as cocky or obnoxious to love yourself or to back yourself. People always want to try and bring you down, only ever out of jealousy. This is true. Most of the time that I've ever gotten hate or I've ever had negative people impact me in some ways when they've been jealous. And anytime I've ever been cruel to people, I can also pinpoint it back to my own jealousy inside. This is in our human nature. This is how we're raised because 
we can be sour and we can be stubborn and we can be really, really cruel. Humans can be cruel and we all have power within us to do that. But we also have more power. Light is always so much stronger than darkness. We all have power in us to be amazing humans and to spread positivity and to spread it within ourselves. If you can't spread it to others, at least find it within you. What I have written under that is mind power. Line with an exclamation mark. Your mind, I don't know how many times I have to say it, your mind is one of the most powerful tools you have. If you let it fuck with you though, then it can become an absolute mess. At the moment, what's kind of spurred on this kind of thought about the mind is a few things. One, I started meditating. My friend Rochelle Fox kind of came in and um, started teaching me about meditation and I have a video on that coming later. But one of the main things that she actually brought up was saying, you are not your mind. Um, you're a completely different person from your mind. Your mind does not control you and you are not all the negative feelings that your brain is telling you. You're not all the horrible things that it's saying to you, if that makes sense. Like, when, when you hear your brain saying, oh, you're fat, you're ugly, you're shit, you shouldn't do that, you should do this. When you have that control in your head, it is not you speaking. It is that little evil voice inside of you. You are bigger than that. You are beyond your brain. If you think about it in this way, actually, no. No. First, I'm going to read out this this little part in this in this book that just like hit the nail on the head about it. And this will definitely this will lead on to my next thing. The mind is a superb instrument if used rightly. Used wrongly, however, it becomes very destructive. To put it more accurately, it is not so much that you use your mind wrongly. You usually don't use it at all. It uses you. This is the disease. You believe that you are your mind. This is the delusion. The instrument has taken you over. The thing is, we honestly, and I used to believe that I, that my mind controlled my everything, that I was the person inside my head saying horrible things about myself and about other people, being judgmental, being egotistical, being cruel to others and putting others down in my own head to make myself feel better, to make myself rise above that. The thing is that your brain is just another organ like your heart. It's just all there to help your body keep running. As humans, we are bigger than that. You yourself are bigger than just your brain. You're, you're beyond that. Your consciousness is much more beyond that. But sometimes it's hard to see that. I mean, we're all interconnected freaking beings. Like, you could say we're bloody aliens if you really wanted to, but somehow we're here and there's no explanation. So all I feel is that humans and have a much stronger power than just thinking in your head. You can connect with people with this, I almost feel like it's like in a, a layer above us that connects us to there or to there, like outside of our body. When you put it into perspective of saying that your brain is just like your heart or just like your the veins in your skin, it's all just there to keep it pumping and to process knowledge and all different sorts of things. And when you can differentiate yourself from your brain and from all the evil thoughts that it has, then you can sit above it and you can just watch over your brain saying these things. And the first step is literally just letting yourself know that you are not your mind. And if you guys want to kind of look more into that and you want to know more stuff about that, I honestly highly recommend reading this book, The Power of Now. It speaks about freeing yourself from your mind, um, rising above thought. I want to give you guys tips or different things to maybe wake your brain up or wake that that high consciousness that you have up to this fact. You need to understand that you are not here to please everyone. You are here on your own individual journey in life. I said this in videos, I've said it to so many people, I've repeated myself on this exact thing so many times, but I think it is so important and I'm going to keep saying it until it starts sinking into people's heads. You are born alone on your own individual journey. You do not owe anyone anything. There is no rule book ever given to you from the start. There is no instructions. There is nothing. All you have is prior knowledge from other people, other humans that have lived earlier than you information that they are telling you that they have experienced, what they believe. So when you're born, people's own opinions on fucking everything is being put into your head. And it's fine. I mean, you have to learn somehow. This is how we learn as humans. We are evolved and we are taught by people around us. Some people are luckier than others. They may be influenced by people with more positive outlooks or with people with more stable lives or with a better income or with great living situations. Other people may also not have the greatest, the most positive people around them. They may have a really crappy living situation. We all have positives and negatives from the minute we're born and these are instantly put onto us. What you have to learn through life is no matter how shit 
your situation may be or how shit you think it may be. It is 100% true that someone else has a worse situation and I can guarantee you that if you're sitting here watching this on a laptop, sitting under a roof right now, we have technology first off. So back to what I was saying, people's opinions and views are instantly put onto you. And through life, we are, each individual is such a powerful person because if you think about it, when you grow up, you actually learn more and you grow, then you're like, oh, actually, I'm really passionate about art. I love art or I love poetry. I love writing. I love swimming. I love running. Uh, horses. I don't know. You just like, people all have different likes. People all have different things that like switch their brain on or switch their body on and make them excited. Some people hate the beach. Some people love cold weather. Some people hate cold weather. We're not all the same. No one is the same person. We're all born differently. And I totally believe we all have different past lives that affect us in different ways in this current life. And everything that happens in your life should be taken as just a lesson. Never think of anything as a horrible, why does this happen to me? My life sucks. Anything shit that happens to you, you should just take and say, what can I learn from this? Moving back on to my main point. Um, if you have something within you that is saying, go and do this, the more you block it and the more that evil voice in your brain tells you that you can't, or if you keep listening to the people around you that are saying you can't do something, then that's when this self-love and the self-empowerment and self-anything is pushed to the side because you're caring too much about what other people have to say and the limitations they're putting on you. Maybe I understand situationally that sometimes you can't go out and do something you want. It could depend on your age, money, it could depend on anything, but you can always start planning, you can always start actively doing something. And you know, the first thing you should always do before you step out on a big venture or before you really commit to this journey of finding yourself and loving yourself and being one with yourself is just connecting with yourself. My journey's taken about three years to really get here. Being completely honest with you, I don't talk about a lot from my teenage years because they were not glamorous. They're nothing like my life right now. I was about 20 kilos heavier than I am now. I was a, an overweight child from a very young age. I've lived with being overweight. I've lived with being bullied for my weight and my appearance. And I mean, I've always made great friends because I have the personality I have. I've always been the person I am. But I always used to get swept by other people's views very easily. It made me extremely hateful and I wasn't, I wasn't very negative, but I was more negative on myself. And I started to listen to everything that people had to say about me. And um, once I removed the toxicness from my life and once I discovered that I was more important than what their view on me was and that I wanted to live a happy life, I was so unhappy within my body, within my what I was doing to myself, I used to just eat to make myself feel better. I had emotional weight just literally just like leeching onto me. Once I removed the negative people from my life and I took the first step to loving myself, by is, which is removing the people that don't love you and don't support you, then that's when I realized I was like, I'm going to start exercising, I'm going to eat healthy, I'm going to treat my body the way it should be treated. So the weight started falling off as I had a more positive input in my life. And then as I grew, I kept surrounding myself by good people. I started to write down my thoughts and feelings. I started to experiment with different things that really made my heart happy. I discovered that I loved the ocean. It was as simple as that, but it was such a big impact because I knew where I could go to make myself happy. I discovered I loved filmmaking. I discovered I loved um, acting. I discovered that I loved public speaking. I loved to help people and that was something that I discovered through my own journey. I think lots of teenagers get wrapped up in the superficial view of themselves. We all care too much about the external view of this, like how we look, what clothes we're wearing, what other people think about us, and it's so easy to get caught up in. I still get caught up in it sometimes, nowhere near as much as I used to. What's important is this. I think lots of people jump over the, um, the seriousness of mental health. People, people literally skip mental health. They think it's the last thing to think about. They think their brain can just take it. Your brain and your mind 
is sensitive. Just fall off a cliff at any point in time and you won't even see it coming. The more you keep abusing your brain, putting it straight, more fucked up you will become. If you start treating your brain with kindness and with love, it'll blossom and it'll grow and it'll only feed you good stuff. The more you keep sending negativity and hatred to your body from your mind and allowing it to do that, the more it's going to fester. Depression, anxiety, paranoia, schizophrenia, all this crap is bottled up from your brain. All of this self-doubt just keeps manifesting in there and it's going to just become harder to ever improve or ever change. Medication, you don't need that shit to get rid of depression and anxiety and all that crap, it all just takes, you have it within you, you can help yourself. You do not need to suppress this shit, it needs to come up and you need to face it first off. Face your demons and then start finding ways to put positivity back into your body. The best example I can always give is when I moved out by myself to Byron, I had to face the fact that I didn't ever speak about my emotions for about like seven years of my life. When my parents divorced, I pushed down every single feeling I had, all the sadness, all the anger, all of the misunderstood feelings within me. I pushed them down and would never talk about it. I bottled my issues. For someone, like, I always thought that I was on top of my shit. I thought I could always talk about my problems, but I have vulnerability problems. I have problems with letting people know how I feel and with showing people that I'm not always okay. And the moment I did that and I opened up to that and I allowed myself to be a normal human and I stopped putting pressure on myself, this is where I grew. I could finally be alone with myself without overthinking. I could actually quieten down that voice in my head. This is where my love and my passion for different things started to develop. I did in that time when I first moved to Byron to develop this and to develop that love that is now all through my body and it's only going to keep growing from now because I know how to work on it but what I did and different tools you guys can use is writing is really great getting your feelings onto paper and just when you're writing it's just like the words flow it could be negative it could be hateful it could be amazing but they're getting out at least they're getting somewhere journaling is actually very therapeutic and it can really help to track your journey I also think reading different books like, you know, The Power of Now and stuff, I've only, I've never really been able to read. I definitely used to always find a massive block. I would get bored. I just couldn't connect with it. And I think it was because my mind wasn't at a point where I was ready to take in that information. Like, I needed to be at a point to first allow it to seep in. And now I feel like this is why this book's just come into my life now and I can actually read it. also think another really important thing is just having a balanced lifestyle, like eating right and exercising properly. Meditation is also a really great tool to use and just you just have to commit to want to be better and also commit to ha want to have a good life and you want to just it's all it's just like if you want to lose weight you know you get up you eat healthy you exercise you go to the gym like you have a routine you should have a routine for your own self-love and for wanting to get to a point where you can love yourself have goals, have ambitions for it, and write them down and, and manifest it. Manifestation is the biggest key, and it's almost like magic money. Like, you can make anything happen for yourself when you treat yourself right, when you treat others right, and when you just have a good... When you just have good energy around you, the universe will look after you, and you will be able to look after you as well because you've got yourself, and then the people you want to attract will then come because you're giving out amazing energy. I don't even know if this shit makes sense. But yes, I just encourage you to connect more with yourself and with the world around you and then you will eventually find all that self-love. You'll find a way to stop comparing yourself to others and you'll realize that you're never going to be anyone else but yourself. This is the body you've been born into. This is the mind that you've been placed with and you can always change it. You can always grow and never think that just your current situation is the the end final destination but i just want to end this on a little quote that i found that actually florence and the machine posted it, it was really random i didn't even know i followed her on instagram but um i think it's from no it's from a book salt apparently i'll leave it linked below once i figure out what it is but the quote is i love myself the quietest simplest most powerful revolution ever and it's true once you find it maybe right now this might not make sense to you but once you find it you'll actually realize that once you've found inner peace and inner love and connection with you, the world seems like a fucking magical place and it's a lot better and it's a lot more positive and you can finally be, you can give off so much greatness and you can then help others and I can't even express to you how great the feeling of helping others is and actually just being a good human and being positive and giving back and... I think it's so important. This is not only important for young girls or young boys, but for adults as well, like your mums and your dads and stuff like... 
everyone is just somewhat tormented by other people around them and I think it's important to just know that you are enough as the person you are right now, right today. There's always a place for positivity and happiness within you and you'll get there and you'll find it and I like I am so excited to hear maybe some reports of people that are already out there kind of like on their journey to like self-love or like self-empowerment. It's different for everyone but I think you should just find a routine that works for you. Quick example, mine is getting up, normally like making a healthy breakfast, if I can fit in exercise, it makes me feel good to meditate, to maybe read for a little bit, do something I enjoy before I then have to do work, and just writing lists and being organized as well, but then having time to be spontaneous and having time to enjoy, enjoy my life and enjoy the people around me and stuff, so it's all just about balance. Yeah, if you like this, don't forget to share it with other people around you, spread this message and spread the positivity, and um, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave any comments below, I'd love to know your thoughts, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.